Hello, this is Rich, and today I'm going to uh, showcase a feature for the Snappy API that I've been working on just for a little bit here. Um, it's a proof of concept, therefore it's not completely stable nor full featured. It's just a proof of concept showing what is to come in the Snappy API. I think you all be very, very excited. Now, a lot of people, uh, actually, we're going to showcase the scripting uh, system in Snappy. Now, a lot of people will choose different scripting languages uh, that are dy dynamic uh, by nature. So people use Lua, uh, Ruby, Perl, all that stuff. In fact, Snappy scripting uh, language of choice is actually none of those. It's actually C++. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm working on a uh, scripting system uh, that uses plain old C++, um, but it's also uh, you know used in runtime. Um, so basically, Snappy will run, and Snappy can load scripts. These scripts are .h and .cpp files uh, filled with any sort of information you want, um, and they're run real time. So if I go ahead and change one of these scripting values, um, what will happen is it will be recompiled by uh, Snappy's internal compiler. Um, it will then go ahead and um, update everything in the system. I'll go ahead and call the function. So let me give you a better understanding of this. Right now I have a Snappy application that I've created. Um, we have the Snappy API that's right here. Um, a couple of the products, Shadedor is not, not announced yet, but I can't tell you <laughs> anything about it. Um, we also have the script testing, which is what we're going to be running today. This is just a regular project here. Um, it's a project that uses the Snappy API, so it's considered a Snappy application. Um, it uses Snappy API, so we just have a couple of source files here. We have the script testing.h, script testing.cpp, um, and this is the script te testing app. Okay, as you can see here in the applications post in it, uh, script testing, by the way, is derives from Snappy's i application class. And under the post in it, we go ahead and we create our main class. We tell Snappy that, uh, you know, this is our main class, use it. Um, we also then spawn a window using the window controls. We make it a 600 by 400 located at 0, 0. We show it, and then we go ahead and register the main, register the main class um, to be uh, registered and, uh, sorry, rendered and updated every frame. And that's pretty much it. That's it. There's a window. Um, that gets written to um, by the scripts. So that's what we're gonna showcase. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna run this. This is an exe, by the way. Script testing is an application. We're gonna go and run. Then we're gonna run the application. So now I'm gonna minimize this. Now we have an application right here. So it's a 600 by 400 window. Nothing much, it's just showing here. And let's see here, give it a second. And we have zero up on the left-hand side. So that's what the scripting, uh, scripting, uh, script testing application does. All it does is it takes a value from scripts and prints it using the rendering system to the window. We have a value of zero. So let's go ahead and open up the actual script, something that we can modify in real time. So here's our script. A script is a solution, a project, and you know as many source files as we want. Um, this is a prototype. I, you know, iterate again to you guys. C++ files will be the end um, script. The end script will be uh, .h and .cpp. There will be no projects, nor solutions required. Therefore, speeding up uh, very fast reloading of scripts. Because uh, uh, currently... Uh, compiling an entire project takes a little bit of time, but again, it's a proof of pro uh, proof of concept. So here we go. Now, in order to expose functions and variables to um, the C++ side uh, from scripting, uh, all you have to do is add the Snappy API macro right here. All it pretty much does is exports um, the function to the DLL and also marks it as C language. Okay. So. Every script you have, no matter where you what file it's in, it has to have a set snappy global function. Okay, function that doesn't belong to any class. Set snappy. It needs to accept a snappy pointer. It needs to look like this. Okay, and that's all you need to worry about here. You don't need to have it, but if you want your script to be able to uh, call the C++ runtime functions um, and use the snappy API, 
um, then you actually absolutely need to this function here. You don't ever call it. Um, it's called automatically from the um, host, the application. Okay, and here we go. We have the snap API int get value. So this function here is exposed to uh, C++ now. Well, this is C++, but it's exposed to the uh, application. Okay, and this is a script. So what I'm going to do here, we have zero. I'm going to change this value to let's say ten. I'm going to make sure I select my solution, go to file, save all. Now, our application is still running. I could still interact with it. Um, I don't have any uh, sort of buttons or anything on the screen uh, right now, but I could still interact. Okay, and we're going to give it a few seconds here. It's going. It's going. It's going. Take a drink here. So, up to the left hand corner, you can still give a value of 10. So, remember, our application is still running, yet we are using C as our scripting language. Let's go ahead and make another function. This is the beauty of using the C. You get the um, IntelliSense by Microsoft, you get the um, code completion, you get the, the whole a very familiar. Um, syntax that you're used to and it's very low level and it performs fast okay so what we're going to do is we can also add things in real time uh, while the application is still going okay so it runs on a separate thread here all right so what we'll do is this we're going to make a new function we're going to call it get value two. okay and all we're going to do here is we're going to tell it to return um, 10 Okay, we're going to say get value return 10. We're then going to take our get value function here and we're going to call it. We're going to return 10 plus get value 2. So that's what we have here. Get value, so we return plus get value 2. Notice that this function is not exported, so this function will not be available to the scripts, but the script internally can access these functions. Okay, so here we're going to do return 10 plus get value 2. So it's going to be 10. And 10, it's going to be 20. So go ahead and select your solution, file, and save. Now keep in mind, I am compiling, okay? I am runtime compiling um, the whole solution. And that takes quite a bit of time. Uh, we're looking at, I'm in debug mode, and actually this application um, is running in debug mode here. So it, it, not only is it slow because of debug, but it's uh, slow because... I'm um, compiling entire solution, but the end target, okay, the end goal is to uh, um, compile .h and .cpps directly, so um, super, super fast. All right, so you can see up here we have a 20, so absolutely beautiful. Now, I'll show you how we can use Snappy, okay? We're going to use the runtime memory that's inside of the running application from our scripts, and this is why we use the set Snappy. Um, Snappy, uh, global variable, g underscore p snappy is where you can get all the interfaces. So we have access to basically everything in the Snappy API. So what we're going to do here is, since I don't want to crash here, this function does return an int, but we'll give it a return value of zero. Then we'll take our Snappy, and we will get the application, for instance, okay? And then we will, oops, see? It doesn't know about iApplication. So, beautiful, no problem. In our scripts, we just need to include from the Snappy API, iApplication. Now we can use the, the application class, okay? And we're going to call the shutdown method. So, from my our scripts, I'm actually going to shut down the parent application by using the Snappy API from my scripts, okay? So what we're gonna do is gonna make sure the uh, solution is selected, file, save all now this window should close and the application should exit let me get over here so you can see the actual debugging close when it's all done and so i'll give it a few seconds here like i said it is runtime compiling on demand um, when script changes are detected here um, in a separate thread so it's running it's zero beautiful and the application closes I wanted to pull up this window here so you can see that the actual process and everything closed. So as you can see, our script right here, get value, 
is calling the snappies function shutdown. Now, the cool thing about it, it uses shared memory. So the running application obviously has to have a, a memory that points to an actual application, uh, which in this case is our script testing application. It's pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Uh, it's actually very cool. I'm very happy uh, to, to uh, support um, this. Um, the only people I do know that do support this are actually um, Epic Games with the Unreal Engine 4. They support real-time scripting. I don't know how they implement theirs, um, but I implement mine you know, the way I do it. But this is very exciting. I'm very excited to support this. Um, the entire Snappy API or any API you want to integrate into your scripts can be used. Okay, it's beautiful. Now let me show you the other side. Okay, I'll show you the other side um, on what is happening here. Now this is a test script testing application that I made, and we're going to go up to the uh, render function here. So the main gets called every single frame here on 2D post render. Okay, it's very very simple. Here's what I do, I get snappy, I get the script system, I tell it to compile a script. I give it the script to compile. Now this script here is a solution file, so I'm giving it the name of a solution file to compile. Okay, So I'm compiling the solution, blah blah blah, and then I create a type def to hold the function I'm about to ret return. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a script system again. J score p snappy, get script system, get function. I'm going to tell it the script that I want to use and the function name that I want to get. So I'm going to go ahead and get the function get value. We saw this value in our scripts here. We know the function signature because we created the script. So we have an int function signature that has no parameters. So we're going to create a function pointer here, cast the get function to our function here. Now we have the function. So now we actually have a handle to the script function here. Now I'm going to check if the script get value does exist uh, if it does exist and everything's okay here's what we're going to do we're going to call the script get value the script get value was the function so we have the function pointer now we're going to call the function pointer very simple i'm going to convert this with std to w string okay this returns an integer okay and it's going to return uh, whatever it returns from this function here so zero all right, so it's going to do std uh, to w string zero. So the text is going to be zero, right? So now I'm going to take the render system. I'm going to get the default brush and set the color. I'm going to make sure the color is red. I'm then going to take snappy, get the render system, and write text. I'm going to write the text at position zero zero zero, and let it know that the text can actually write to the entire screen, 600 by 400. You know, the actual window. So there we go. This gets called every frame. Now, this is a test uh, case. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to um, go ahead and do something along the lines of this. Uh, you know, this. But for testing purposes, uh, for you guys, I showed you that. So every frame, this get value is getting called, and it's doing the stuff inside of here, returning values, blah blah. The cool thing is, is um, you can have your script return values and use the return value in your actual code. Um, so the possibilities are endless. I'm very, very happy to support this. And uh, give me a comment. Tell, you, tell me what you guys think. I'm going to show you one more time by running the application. And by default, it's going to start up and then shut down. Because <laughs> it's running the function. Well, thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you get excited. Future updates will be coming. Bye. <laughs> if I can get this thing closed.